Warning. While lock sport is legal, possession of lock picks may be considered burglary tools in your state. Please research your own laws and legislation before getting into lock sport. Everything I provide for you in this video is for informational purposes only. I assume no legal liability. Blah, 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 blah. You've been warned. Welcome to Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero. Here for a different kind of video this week. Something that's not my normal. Here's a bunch of EDC gear and what's in my pockets and knives and stuff like that. I've been recording this video for about a month. My skill level increases with what I'm talking about in some of the contexts, and this is like a journey video. I don't want you to take this as any kind of instructional how to get into lock picking or lock sport 101 kind of video. Just this is my vlog, and I'm taking you on my introductory journey into lock sport. I'm going to talk to you today about a couple different topics. The first one is lock picking. That's the main point of this video. And I'm also going to talk about where I've been and how I've been feeling. Because truth be told, I've been pretty depressed. My dog recently died. He was 15 year old Bichon. Super good boy, the goodest of boys. Uh, he lives a super long and happy life, and you know, I, I don't feel bad that he's not suffering and not in pain. But at the same time, like, whenever a dog dies naturally or you have to put him down, it's just so sad. You miss your buddy, your friend that you've had for all of those years. And my grandma died a few months ago, and I was sad, you know. But, like, she didn't live with me. She didn't sleep at the foot of my bed. She didn't snuggle with me all of the time. That had been super creepy. But my first mate hardly did all of those things with me all of the time. And I miss it, you know. I miss my buddy. I miss my friend. And it's been tough to get on camera and, you know, put on a hype face for you guys and, and talk about cool stuff that I like. This master is killing me. I fucking hate this thing. So, what have I been doing? I've been picking locks. Been raking. I've been picking. I've been trying my best to understand lock sport. To figure out all of the intricacies. There's so many different nomenclatures. There's so many different types of locks and tools and techniques. And people have different opinions on stuff because that's just the way the world is. And trying to figure all of that out is is daunting. But I love research and I love a new hobby. And I have been so into lock sport these last couple months. I've been interested in lock picking for a long time. As a computer security specialist, you know, I deal with controls around security in the digital world all of the time. So the analogs in the physical world have always been interesting. When you see someone, you know, just pop open a lock super effortlessly with some kind of rake or something like that, it's just, it seems like a superpower that these people have. I don't know what recently got my attention with lock picking, but I've been watching a lot of videos on how locks work and what the security mechanisms in them actually are and how you go about bypassing those mechanisms. As you might have saw in my last video, I picked up a little survival set that had some lock pick tools in it and I started picking away and, and it was just really exciting, you know, being able to learn a new skill and to do something that you thought was like a superpower, not that hard, seemed really exciting and it got me more excited about locks. Well, I started posting some videos picking locks and I started picking more that I found around my house and stuff like that. One of my followers here on YouTube, Spencer Austin, just commented on one of my videos and said, hey, I'm a locksmith. I could just send you a whole box of locks if you're interested and, you know, up in your pick sport. And I was like, hell yeah, dude, that's a super awesome offer. And we started chatting. He told me that he was actually a second generation locksmith that from the ripe old age of like eight or something, his dad taught him how to pick locks. And uh, he's just sort of been doing it ever since. He seems like both a locksmith and a lock sport enthusiast, which it kind of just oddly seems like there's not a lot of overlap in those areas. But I expected the guy to send me a box of locks, and that's not what he sent me. I mean, it is. He sent me all of these locks that I have set up here that is now totally messed up in my display. A bunch of picks, a bunch of tension tools, combs, everything in this lovely Sparrows case. But he also hooked me up with this Covert Instruments case, first of all. Got the web field for the reaction here on the front, of course you know me. And it's got a magnetic closure. So it's 
it, you can like slap it, but it's very quiet. Most lockpick sets are a zipper or Velcro, and this is like very tactical. And you flip it this way, and all of your picks and tension tools and stuff like that are all in here. And he also hooked me up with stuff from the Arbiter Bypass Kit. This in particular, this door hook thing, which you can like use like four or five different ways on, on doors. This thing's awesome. I know you're not supposed to test this kind of stuff on your own locks in your house, but your guy did, so, and it totally works. And this thing has become my, like, go-to. This is my pick case for my favorite tools and stuff like that. And then this is for the stuff that I don't use as often, but you need. And there's just, like, so many tools in here that dude made. Like, there are all these tension wrenches, like this one. My favorite, which you'll see more of in the picking video portion of this, is just, like, a little piece of metal that he forged into the perfect tension tool, and I like it more than almost any of the other ones that are in there from expensive lockpick sets. So, Spencer Austin, once again, buddy, shout out to you so much. You have become my mentor in lock sport. You have, you've given me so much, and you've, you know, our conversations have taught me a lot, too, and you've given me all kinds of enthusiasm and help along this way and this journey. It's been awesome and I really do appreciate you, buddy. It means a whole lot to me. So the Reddit lock sport community has really kind of gamified picking locks. And what they've done is they've created a karate belt system. And what that means is they've basically gone through pretty much every lock on the market, or most of them, and classified them into different difficulty levels. And then associated those with the color of a karate belt. So if you are able to pick a lock of a certain difficulty, you could rate yourself as a lock picker with that belt color. I myself am now an orange belt because I raked open a disc detainer lock, which was really tricky, which I'm going to show you in a minute. The karate belt system is a little more than just like fun gamification though. It also helps you decide what locks you want to try and pick next. Just going into Ace Hardware and picking a random lock that's in there might be a really tricky lock. It might be a really easy lock. You kind of need to go in there with a little bit of recon before you just start buying locks. And honestly, hardware stores are not the best place to get locks. I personally think that finding them in your house, getting them from your friends and family, or literally raiding them from bridges, because these days it's so popular to hang locks of love on bridges. Just about every town in this country has them. Just get your picks and go out there for a walk and see what you can pull off of that bridge. I hate this lock. I, I can rake this thing open, but I cannot pick it. It's driving me crazy. So here, as I'm saying this lock is driving me crazy, I want to talk to you about how lock sport is so soothing and comforting, because that is the perfect segue, right? Like I said, I've been pretty down. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've definitely not been myself, and it's, it's pretty obvious to my friends and family. As you know, with all my fidget toy love, I like to do stuff with my hands. I've got a lot of nervous energy, and lock picking is exactly that. It's it's doing something with your hands, and I'm holding it in this little T-Rex pose because I'm trying to get it in the frame for this video more than I'm, my more natural pick positioning, but you get the idea. I kind of just think that when you're sitting there reading something, trying to like get feedback with your hands and feel something out can really be kind of cathartic. I, I would, wouldn't suggest doing it on a really tricky lock that you have to pay attention to. It's more on trainer locks when you're trying to get good and you're just trying to understand what you're doing inside of the lock. There's a lot of tension control stuff. It's just practice to get to the point of muscle memory. And what's the best way to learn? By doing. Practice makes perfect, baby. And the only way you're going to get good at anything besides raking zero is by doing it. So, you know, the jiggle test is the first thing that you need to Google if you want to get into lock picking. Normally the context is around high security pins, but the exact same logic applies to a low security or a regular pin. Being able to feel whether it's binding or whether it's springy and ready to go, if over or under set, you only learn that stuff by literally getting a hook in there and pressing up and down on pins and finding out how hard or how light it needs to be. The only way you're going to figure out tension is by holding up different locks and trying your same picking technique with more or less tension. Does it need a super firm, sturdy thing or does it need to be as light as possible? Pro tip. Single pin picking is normally medium to hard pressure, while raking is like the lightest tension you can possibly do. A lot of rakers kind of like drop their hand like this and shake both the rake and the lock and kind of just lightly 
dab the tension, so to speak. But when you're single pin picking the lock, you need to keep the tension going the whole time. You can let off, but you don't want to get to that point where you've let off too far and you're going to drop your pins back to unset again. But you also don't want to push too hard where you're going to be, you know, pushing against the core and the pins on the inside of the keyway are not going to want to move. This is a cutaway lock from Sparrows. It's a whole brass lock right here. But there's a window cut in that allows you to see each of the pins. You can see as I remove the key, each of these pins are going to fall down. As I insert them, see them all move into place right here on the shear line, allowing me to turn the key. Now, this lock is equipped with spool pins, which are pretty tricky. But what I like to do here is I like to just feel one pin at a time here with my hook. Just go down here. I don't have any tensioner in here. The only thing I'm doing is trying to count these pins. And when you have a window here, it allows you to get a better view of what you're actually doing. Is your pick on the pin that you actually think that it is? How far are you oversetting it? Is it to the perfect shear line? What's, what's happening in there? And this gives you a little bit of visual representation of what you're feeling. And it's very easy just not to look in the window and just put your hand over top of it and then do the same exercise again. Go ahead and just count front to back or back to front, pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. And you see how I'm grabbing multiple pins here? If you put your pick all the way across each of them and then just sort of push down, you can manipulate all of the pins at once. Um, I actually think this is a pretty good technique to get your bearings in a lock. Get to the point where you're able to manipulate all of the pins and then back off a little bit and start saying, okay, now I know that my hook is at least somewhat aligned in here and I can just get my finesse down until I'm now individually manipulating these pins as best as I can. Now, I'm not great at single pin picking, as I've said a lot in this video. This is a trainer lock that I'm using to try and help me get some visual understanding of what I'm feeling inside of a lock. And since the bidding of a lock is pretty much the same across the board, getting these little muscle memories of here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, that how far your hook has to go in to manipulate each of those pins is a good exercise just to teach you a little bit about the feel inside of a lock. I kind of just wanted to show off a few different hook profiles here just to give you an idea of how many different types there are. But if we take a look at like these two deep hooks right here, you can see that the profile is very similar, but if we turn them sideways, hard to tell, but this one here is way thicker and this one is way thinner. And you can tell here with the amount of flexibility that they have, this one is very flexy, this one's not as flexy as it is. Even though they've both got the same kind of plasti dipped handles on them, they're made by the same maker, but they just give you a sort of different feel and a different reach inside of a lock. I've personally started my journey using one of these. It's like a sh very shallow hook with a flat tip on the edge to try to click from point to point in here. And this is very low profile, so you can see this is gonna vertically fit in a ton of different keyways. You can step that up just a little bit with another flat tool. You can see that the height is around the same, but it's a lot thicker and the edge is a lot bigger. It really clicks through the pins as you're indexing your way through. Similar idea here, but with a more lever style here on the front, you really can get that action on one pin at a time while keeping that very low profile feel to this sort of short flat hook. This monkey paw profile is sort of a new one. See, there's a little notch there on there. It's designed to help you sort of feel as you go from pin to pin as you're indexing your way through the lock. Sometimes though, you got really tricky pins and you really got to push them up high and you're going to need a deeper hook like this one that it's a little trickier to vertically navigate. Sometimes you got to like work your way around the wording or whatever, but I generally like to go up top and all the pins on my way through to make sure I'm in the right spot, then lower as much as I can and then individually start to pick after that. 
but yeah, this little trainer lock, it's not necessarily like a requirement, but I'm definitely getting some value out of just being able to see where my pick is in relation to where I think that it is. So I definitely think that a lock like these are helpful when you're starting out, but I'm not sure if it's the first thing that you should really get. I kind of like how I just got in there with some locks with my, my blindfold on, so to speak, manipulating stuff inside and getting open. So it really hypes you up, which I'm not sure a win on this will do quite the same. But since this is the spool pin version, I'm trying to learn something a little bit more tricky, so I've yet to open this. So I've been picking locks for a few weeks now. It's not been a super long time, and I think I have eight locks now under my belt. Most of them I've opened raking, to be completely honest with you. I've, I've been learning single pin picking a lot recently. That's what I'm focusing on right now, is getting the feel and, you know, understanding the feedback that I'm getting from the lock so I can get them open. But with raking, it's supposed to be a lot more effortless. It's about getting in there as fast as you possibly can more than figuring the lock out. It's just wiggling your way, jiggling those pins, and getting yourself in. And, you know, my mentor being a locksmith, I think that it makes sense that, you know, the fastest way in the door is the fastest way to the money, right? But with lock sport, it's more about figuring out how to pick locks and understanding how they work, figuring out the security mechanisms and subverting them whether it is by manipulation or bypass. I'm not against raking, it's great. But single pin picking is what everyone is like about in the lock sport community. And when you get to the higher belts, it's required. I've been learning how to defeat all kinds of locks. For wafer locks, for instance, all you really need is a skeleton key. You just find the one that has the right shape to it, get it in the right position, and you can just unlock it like you got the key. And there's just, you know, only so many that it that these types of locks have and you can just find the right one and open it. With some locks like these, it's just a matter of having the right tool that you need to actually get it open, while others take a lot more skill and finesse. The keyways of locks come in all different shapes and sizes. Inside, each has different security methods that you have to figure out how to thwart or bypass, and it's just a big time learning experience because there's just so many different types of locks in this world. I think Covert Instruments is one of the best makers using some of the best steel of any of the lock picks you can buy. For entry level tools like the Genesis and Echelon sets, I think they're the best for your money from any of the makers. I don't have any kickbacks from them, but it's Black Friday and they're having a Black Friday sale right now. The FNG bundle is so cheap. If you were gonna get yourself or somebody else into lock sport and wanted to buy them just like two picks and a tension turner and a, and a lock that it would all go together for like sub $10, it's a great deal. They've also got a bunch of other crap on their site if you want to check it out. Go for it, obviously. I bought some stuff myself. If you're looking for lock sport content to watch here on YouTube, besides the obvious big names like Covert Instruments, McNally, and Lock Picking Lawyer, Lock Noob is another huge name, but I really have been into Sandman. Uh, link in the description. His channel, he reviews the pick sets themselves and the tension tools. He's a big time collector and he obviously knows what he's talking about, comparing them to other ones. And he says that he's not a good picker, but he's picked on video a few times and they're great. And I just, I enjoy the way that he talks and he does history videos on the, the tools and it's, it's really interesting content and if you're into it check it out link in the description I also want to shout out a local Pittsburgh homie I've been chatting with and watching her content Lady Locks and uh, she is a super good picker and knows what she's talking about I've been learning a lot about how to gut locks and trying to get up the confidence to try and watching her videos gutting locks gives you a lot of confidence when she messes up she laughs it off and she does a lot of live stream stuff she's big in the community she shouts out a lot of other other lock sport community members and her videos so shout out to you link in the description below for all these things I'm gonna go top of the keyway on this guard security guy never actually even tried to pick this one but we'll see how it goes well, single pin action in here all right well that's the talking portion of this video I'm gonna leave you with a little montage of my reddit picking exploits I've got my white belt and my orange belt test videos edited because you know you can't have cuts in your reddit belt submission video so I made them look a little nicer I did some zoom cuts in there and made them just a little fancier for your enjoyment I hope you dig them if not you can just hop off here and I got the lock open for the end of the video perfect that's the best ending that I could have had that hyped me up and this is what I'm talking about when you pick a lock for the first time you get this joy and exuberance and I got it on camera and you caught it you know I've been super down and I, I'm craving this kind of energy in my brain and 
this has been fun and I've been enjoying lock sport. So I want to share this love of a new hobby that I've got with you. Hey, and if no one has told you today, you're a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, have some fun, pick some locks, keep it legal, and I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy these belt tests.
like a boy.